Okay. Good afternoon, everybody. Today is Monday, March 24th. It is 4 p.m. If I can go ahead and get a call to order and a roll call, Madam Clerk. Mayor Shirley. Here. Commissioner Blanchard. Here. Commissioner Crawford. Here. Commissioner Hardy. Here. Commissioner Hossel. Here. If I can get everyone that's able to stand and do a Pledge of Allegiance in a moment of silence, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag. We do have an award and proclamation. The day of April 1st, 2014 is National Service Recognition Day in the city of Salina. Nancy Klossmeyer, director of RSVP, Saline County, will read the proclamation. Thank you, and my colleague, Suzanne Harrington, representing the Foster Grandparent Program is uh, here to give moral support and add a bit. Proclamation of the City of Salina, Kansas, whereas service to others is a hallmark of the American character and central to how we meet our challenges, and whereas AmeriCorps and Senior Corps address the most pressing challenges facing our cities and nation, educating students for future success, supporting veterans and military families, preserving the environment and helping communities recover from natural disasters, and whereas national service expands economic opportunity by creating more sustainable, resilient communities and providing education, career skills, and leadership abilities for those who serve. And whereas national service participants serve in more than 70,000 locations across the country, including Salina, bolstering the civic, neighborhood, and faith-based organizations that are so vital to our economic and social well-being, and whereas national service participants increase the impact of the organizations they serve, both through their direct service and by recruiting and managing additional volunteers, and whereas national service represents a unique public-private partnership that invests in community solutions and leverages non-federal resources to strengthen community impact and increase the return of taxpayer dollars, and whereas local senior corps vo volunteers serving through the foster grandparent and RSVP programs demonstrate commitment, dedication, and patriotism by making an intensive commitment to serve in our community. And whereas the Com Corporation for National and Community Service shares a priority with mayors nationwide to engage citizens, improve lives, and strengthen communities, and is joining with mayors across the country to support the Mayor's Day of Recognition for National Service on April 1, 2014, now therefore I, Barb Shirley, Mayor, hereby proclaim April 1, 2014 as National Service Recognition Day in Salina, Kansas, and encourage residents to recognize the positive impact of national service in our city, to thank those who serve, and to find ways that they also can give back to their community. Signed this 24th day of March, 2014, Barb Shirley, Mayor. Do you have any activities or events planned for this? We do, and I'm going to let uh, Suzanne address those. We've got some really exciting events planned for that day. On April 1st, which is a Tuesday, Mayor Shirley will be joining, accompanying the foster grandparents in the RSVP van, and they will be traveling over to Sunset Elementary School, where they will be reading to the kindergarten class there. And the, the book we have selected is by Jill Biden, and it's God Bless Our Troops. So, and we look forward to seeing. That warms my heart. I like yeah. Joe Biden. So it's a cute that'll book. That'll be a good book for me to read. <laughs> it's a really cute book. And we also have some stickers for you. Oh, fantastic. And I do have, I have the signed proclamation, and I, I don't know if I should give you that or if I should give that to Nancy, either one. Okay. Thank you. And thanks to all those foster grandparents out in the audience yeah. and the volunteers. Yeah. 
All right, ladies, thank you. We'll go ahead and go on to citizen forums. This is an opportunity for anybody that would like to approach the commission on something that's not on today's agenda. Now would be your chance to do so. Y'all don't want to stay? Aww. It gets really exciting. It, it gets feeling. really it does. exciting. It does. <laughs> it must have been <laughs> I'll just go ahead and repeat that one more time just in case somebody did want to come up in the process of everyone clearing out on the volunteers. Is there anybody that would like to approach for citizen forums today? Okay. We have no public hearings or items scheduled for a certain time, so we'll move on to consent agenda. Item 6.1, approve the minutes of March 17th, 2014. Item 6.2, authorize purchase of one wastewater pump for wastewater collection from Environmental and Process Systems, Inc. in the amount of $26,710. Uh, 6.3, resolution number 14-7086, authorizing the agreement with Assurance Partners, LLC, to provide insurance broker services. And item 6.4, consider acceptance of public utility easement dedication from the Salina Airport Authority and Versus Technologies, Inc. Is there anything a commissioner would like to amend or remove? Madam Mayor, I move that we adopt the consent agenda as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve consent agenda as is. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? That motion carries 5-0. We'll move on to administration. Mr. Stack. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Commissioners. <coughs> this project has been discussed the last few weeks, at, um, about, about the last month, actually, a couple of study sessions. Um, let's see, at, at the last one, we talked about um, the complete street, impact street design concepts for iron. And we definitely uh, went back and solicited some is input from the area uh, residents and concerned citizens. Held the public meeting on March 6th and then came back to the uh, as at a study session on March 10th and talked a lot about the very many options that we have on this road and kind of the limited some of the limitations with uh, you know a lot of driveways and uh, narrow right of way but at a lot of discussion we came to a conclusion that we felt like we could um, incorporate the following items and so I've tried to list those out the best I can to describe them um, basically total replacement of the pavement and curbs um, trying to put in a f some kind of a median in the middle with that's flush and mountable drive over just to delineate uh, with some stamped concrete where the middle of the road is where the turning lane would be definitely putting in the four foot wide bicycle lanes in each direction from front to Ohio is what I had in my notes and we felt like that was I think that's where we were stopping the the bike lanes uh, the, the five foot sidewalk with a ten foot sidewalk on the north side of, the, of Iron Street or Eight to ten. Eight, yeah. Eight, eight, yes, so really, yeah, we could not fit ten in, so I, I did put eight there. So I do have to clarify that. And that's from front to Delaware. So we are going all the way from front to Delaware. So that's a couple blocks east of Ohio for that portion. Uh, replacing the traffic signal at Oakdale with more aesthetically enhanced traffic signals, similar to the ones in downtown. They're basically black powder coated, got some decorative bases, a little more aesthetically pleasing. Um, pedestrian signal would be similar, and we would definitely work with USD 305 to. Uh, ensure the location is optimal. Uh, replacing the West Star owned street lighting right now, they're just wood poles, so we'd put in the aesthetically enhanced kind of black powder coated would be the concept. We basically use the same ones from downtown um, and connect with the downtown project to Oakdale. I tried to explain that here and it's hard to explain, but to Oakdale we would go to there and then east of Oakdale we would put in the kind of the normal size um, street lighting they'd be 30 foot tall but they would be a black pole so they would still be a nice looking light similar to what we have downtown at the intersections you'd see at the intersections we'll have some I mean they're, they're they look like a cobra head and they're black so it'd be similar to that the decorative ones would only go to Oakdale and that's the more of the 15 foot tall pedestrian poles and then existing West Star lights would remain east of Ohio so we would just we would stop the street lighting at Ohio Street right away landscaping just you know some trees or in that 
ten thousand dollars could cover trees or some landscaping or some other ideas that you know any kind of plantings on the side of the road that we felt like would be uh, beneficial to the project um, stamped and colored crosswalks which did talk about a cross iron and across the intersecting streets so all the streets running east uh, streets that run north south we would cr we would have um, all four legs would have a, a stamped crosswalk and then some additional engineering design and contingencies we'll have to um, add some dollars to to design the lighting system which was not originally anticipated in the project for around 2.747 million so that's um, what the current estimate is at um, turning to the next page our comprehensive plan definitely talks about this um, arterial street design our charts a course for the future of the future policy to design and accommodate or design streets that accommodate all modes of or as many modes of transportation as you can get in the on the street cross section you have to definitely take into account the existing um, you know where the streets located in the existing right of way but um, the that, that helps to uh, make an impact street wherever you're at in the city of Salina so uh, we felt like we've done the best we can with this plenty of discussion these are the options we've come up with us far that we believe we've heard you clarify and make sure these are the right ones but that's that's where we're at for design scope so we felt like we have to comprehensive plan asks us to um, get the City Commission's scope of the project basically so we'll probably be doing this on most of our arterial street projects from now on because most of our arterial streets in Slana are considered impact streets or at least a, a complete street at some point so we'll make sure we not all of them will be the same it's going to be some of them have bigger right away than others in different parts of town but uh, this one has been thoroughly vetted and we feel like this is the best uh, approach for this project uh, the original budget was a little bit under a million dollars so I did I didn't want to clarify what that was for and then why it's so much higher now but we were thinking when we did the cores originally we had asphalt over brick in the in the two outside travel lanes and then we had a pretty thick coat of asphalt over concrete in the center lane so we felt like we could we could replace the two outside lanes and then do a, a minor reconstruction on the middle lane of just really a mill and overlay and then it would it be one complete project when we were done so that was that was the original hope when we were when we'd been uh, working on this project years ago doing repairs and our street crews had done quite a few repairs in the area curbs in decent shape so we didn't feel like we'd have to replace all the curb however it's been overlaid it's hard to tell you know how that would match with a new reconstructed roadway so uh, basically the, the original and the original scope was you know, like I said a million under a million dollars but it was just a lot smaller than this so I guess where we're at now is if we need to add bike lanes take out all the curbs new new concrete or asphalt base or basically concrete in the in between the curbs so that's uh, that's definitely a, a, a major difference in cost so that's that's why it's gotten so much higher um, I guess any other question I guess that's conformance with strategic plan we put quite a few goals that we feel like we're hitting with this one and I guess I'll stand for questions Do we have any questions for staff I mean probably just more comments I think um, probably that initial estimate it was uh, probably pretty optimistic and hoped for a lot of things and, and really didn't take into consideration our comprehensive plan it, it appears like just the general street construction is still obviously the huge bulk of this part a lot of the uh, what may be seen as additives or whatever really are right. uh, yeah it's yeah, 1.9 million is yeah that's, that's, that's the, I mean that's right the big chunk the, I mean big and, chunk, and, uh, yes. uh, one, one quick question I know we we had really discussed just kind of wanting to make sure that any lighting that we put out in front of the community theater didn't sort of take away from Correct. their grand enhancement that they've done there yeah. um, I haven't driven by to pay attention where the black cobra heads are. Will the, any of those? Is that pretty? That's pretty open in front of there, isn't it? I don't think any of those really. Yeah, our uh, our current downtown lighting stops at the at the Iron Street Bridge, so okay. it's basically west of the community theater. So we'll have to just look at where the existing spacings are out there now. And we'll like be. you said, yeah, we'll have to. They have really good lighting there, so that we basically you have design parameters for how much light do you want on the road and. The lights they have there may be putting quite a bit of that out already. Out already. already. So we okay. may not have to put as many lights in that area. Well, just uh, looking at this, I think this is what I gathered from our, our meeting. It seemed like this, I think, came pretty well across what we had discussed and thought was a, a kind of the best of all um, ideas that were pitched to us, I guess. 
uh, I just would comment. I think it's it's a it's a gateway to uh, our downtown, and I think we'll really enhance. And I think it's a street that when people go down, they'll feel like they're in a nice community. And I think it represents what where we're trying to go uh, uh, as a city. So I, I think it's a nice plan, and uh, definitely applaud all your guys for the work that they put into it, and and uh, look forward to seeing it get done. So. Thank you. Uh, I have a question on this on the second item here. The the uh, well. I, I, let me make a comment first, a question in that, and then hit this item. And that is, is uh, as we just had our study session in, in uh, on the uh, art component of this, is there is there an art component of this project? And and if so, what what's the number that is is put with that so far? There is not at this point. Okay. Um, Lots of like like uh, Brad and and uh, arts. Committees have talked about you can incorporate, you know, just a stamp pattern could be something we could do to incorporate some artistic components to it. But uh, we currently don't have a budget. So set there's aside not, for there's art. no number other than the twenty thousand for the stamped uh, flush mountable median twenty thousand there, and then uh, another thirty three, and then another twenty four for. So what's that? Probably about fifty seven, sixty seven, seven about. Almost eighty thousand dollars for the stamped con st stamped and colored concrete. Right. Okay. Um, all right. Because I just and, and I guess my comment then is on is on kind of what we're looking at as an impact street and what this uh, what we kind of I think hope to get with with the design and the and the elements that we're putting into this street and that is is to be. Uh, the big impact and why it's an impact street is because it's the street that a lot of people are going to be traveling on mm -hmm. and primarily to, to reach downtown. Correct. And uh, one of the things about uh, the downtown is, is as we hope to increase and, and strengthen that core um, to help promote a sense of arrival and through the use of design and design elements and, and those kind of things to, to kind of mark as you're coming in on iron that you're arriving somewhere. Um, I know that uh, for years uh, Salina Downtown Inc. has had um, on their uh, strategic planning list uh, gateways for the four entries into, into downtown. And I just want to make sure that we're not moving this so rapidly forward that we're missing out on those opportunities that I don't think are going to come back again and I know funds are tight, but is it possible that if we were to look at marking that somehow as a gateway, we can do that within the budget here so we don't go higher than the uh, 2747000 Is there any way we can adjust some of those by maybe pulling back on some of the stamped concrete elements and, and incorporate mm -hmm. That kind of a a more a, a design element that I think would make more of an impact, and also accomplish some of the goals of some of our other partners and and the downtown and everything else at the same time. So, uh, I, you know, we're always talking about we need we need to have game changing projects and we need to get more splash and everything. And I think this is just an opportunity that I'm not sure we want to miss. Uh, because it could, I think, make an impact. Mm. Dan, real quick, as it, re as it relates to the cost, we have uh, $20,000 to add the four-foot-wide bicycle lanes, but isn't the, from curb to curb, isn't our width going to be the same as it is today, or is it actually going to be, be wider? It will be wider. Correct. Was that specifically for the lanes, or is that already Bike intended? Lanes. Well, no, we were intending, like, originally to kind of make a road inside the curbs that were there, but right. to actually add the bike lanes, and a, a, a median or an area in the middle for turn lanes, we, we really needed four foot approximately on both sides. So that's why we had to widen. Okay. Widen so I thought the width, width was going to be the same. Um, the, and 20,000 seems, if, you're, if we're really talking, wh wh how much are we actually widening from curb to curb versus what it is today? Not eight, I assume not eight feet for the bike lanes is probably smaller because 20,000 seems awfully inexpensive for that right. run. Yeah. Yeah. And when I said 20,000, you know, total pavement replacement has in the, that's the whole nine. Mm -hmm. I wanted to kind of delineate bike lanes will cost us 20,000 extra in striping. That's really all that is. 
Okay. So the bike lanes are just, that's just, that's just extra to stripe. We're, okay. we're building the road a certain width. If you want to put some stripes on it, well, okay. right. on average, you're going to spend about 20 grand for three quarters of a mile, which okay. is about what this ends up being. The, uh, the um, uh, center uh, flush median stamp colored concrete, it shows a plus 20,000 for that. And that's a pretty long run as it's planned in this. Yeah. Um, compared to, say, the stamp colored concrete crosswalks on iron, which aren't nearly as many square feet, I wouldn't think. But they're plus thirty-three thousand. I was having trouble right. reconciling why, while the crosswalks are only thirty-three, and that in the center median was twenty. Wondering if they're really. And, and don't get me wrong. I know when we these are estimates, and when we uh, bid this, it'll all kind of fall together. But it will. but the thought being is, is that the I would think that the cost of that full center turn width be more. median is going to be a lot more than that, and that may be on the question of a trade-off. I think talking earlier, if uh, let's say that we started that median at uh, Oakdale. The, the stamped concrete median mm -hmm. at Oakdale, but just left it a typical three-lane roadway from Oakdale East to Ohio Street. Um, I, I just wonder if that 20000 is a lot less than what the actual impact would be. Yeah, we really called Cow Valley before this meeting to kind of clarify that a little bit. And when we were originally talking about um, uh, the median, and at the time we were, we had originally looked at if the median was a median and it didn't have concrete there, well, you kind of can take the concrete out and you put the median in some kind of a wash, it's only $20,000 difference. Well, that's really not what we're doing here. So 20,000 is probably not a fair number. We weren't sure exactly what that would be as far as, but 1.9 million, uh, that kind of, we felt like covers our pavement costs, depending on how big the median is or how small or what kind of stamp pattern. Because when you can pave the, the median, you don't have to stop. I mean, it's, it's a one, it's a paving operation with a stamp. Whereas mm -hmm. the crosswalks are, there are cutouts. There are basic cutouts all over. There are four different cutouts, so that you just can't pave. They're the uh, they're slower work. The slower work. Economy of scale for the middle is going to be. We're going to realize quite a bit on that, but it's like you said, it's probably going to be more than twenty thousand. Yeah, because right. what'll happen? Those will taper in for the turn lanes at those right. locations, and right. that takes you into that slower work as yeah, well. That's the slower work exactly. When you're just going twelve foot wide for right. a couple of blocks, it's not going to be an issue. But and so that's maybe the question. And, and commissioners, I think. From a policy perspective, I'd need to to see if you all have consensus. If you said, okay, can, is there a part that we can trade off in order to have some type of a gateway fixture? Which I think the comp plan actually says on impact streets, if you can do that, it yeah. encourages that as well as the downtown plan. Mm -hmm. But if we said somewhere between the the downtown and Oakdale, wherever it makes sense, to have some kind of a solid <coughs> gateway structure, we sort of hit that at the very very end of the study session, but didn't have time to to talk about it. The question is, is it important for you if we can trade off and not in essence add cost to this to have something like that that says you have arrived downtown, you know that you've arrived and it creates that true gateway uh, feel for the for only thing that folks. The only thing that concerns me there is for one, I think that gateway really needs to be thought out because it's going to be something that's going to be at four different locations and there's really going to have to be a plan to that. And, and so I'm a little concerned trying to sort of push it into this project because I know we're working on a schedule here. And I know that at some point we're probably going to have to yank out that Iron Street culvert and, and probably put some kind of bridge or something in at that spot. And I almost wonder if that isn't a better time to address that than now because I wouldn't want to necessarily put in a sign. That would seem the logical place or that area to then just take it back out while we redo a bridge there too. That's also a concern. I'm all for the element. I mean, we talked about that at the end of the meeting. And of course, I've been a big welcome to Salina f Arch fan from day one. And so... If we did do it, my my opinion would be, and you could leave this part out of the article, I would encourage, encourage us then to spend the additional money because I like what we're doing with the street and I wouldn't want to take away any things here. I thought, I thought we had a pretty good meeting and, and really came up with some nice plans that looked good. I would foresee us actually raising the cost of the project, uh, unfortunately, but I think it is an important design element that we did discuss. I just would want to make sure that it doesn't have to be removed at a future bridge project. What, and what, whatever plan we came up with was very well thought out yeah. because it's going to be with us for a long time and it's going to be four different four entryway or four, four we, plans. When would we anticipate that? That is there is there something currently in the works of replacing the culvert on Iron Street now? No, or? and, and I, from a geographic perspective, I would expect a gateway type structure to be further east than that <laughs> bridge. So mm -hmm. I don't I don't think right. that will be an issue. But I, I do think when you think of scale. Uh, we have this roadway width, uh, I would presume Santa Fe, north and south would be an area, and possibly Iron Street, uh, maybe off of 9th Street Ninth, coming yeah. in or something. But I'm not sure, I, I'm, I'm speculating, I think Santa Fe's wider, 
mm -hmm. than this. And so whatever yes. we do, we do have to think of scale of other locations. Mm -hmm. Like you say, mm -hmm. if it's going to be replicated in three other locations, two right. of those are likely going to be quite a bit wider. I don't know about East Well, Iron. if you are east of, east a little bit further, the road is narrow, more narrow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. that... So it's probably different even on the east side of Iron, uh, east of downtown, or I'm sorry, west, west of downtown. Yeah, you've right. got, um, at front it goes... From about five lanes to the three, three. yeah, so that is you know the old Dillon's there yeah, is, a, is an area. So, yeah, and I think that probably when to to coordinate that with the with sort of your paving strategy and mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. your lighting strategy down to Oakdale, I think it it makes a complete package, and it seems like there is a sense of arrival with the, the other elements that take place, and I think it's the logical, I think it's the more logical place for. Mm -hmm that gateway. You, you feel it where I'm, I didn't catch where you saying Oakdale yeah, or, east or? of Well, I would say east of, maybe just slightly east of Front, Front Street. Front so Street, yeah. Mm -hmm. Not yeah. quite, not quite Oakdale because there's a lot going on there, but mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. as you start to arrive into downtown, you have that sense of arrival. And I think that you could do a, a gateway that would be, uh, doable in that location that that the road's not too wide that it would get lost and that it would be um, easy to replicate at other mm -hmm. gateway locations as well so in my research for that welcome to Salina sign which was a big couple of big brick pillars mm -hmm. uh, road work over two lanes uh, I think was I was told by a sign company roughly about hundred thousand I mean so if, I don't know if I mean these are all of course all just rough estimates I don't think this particular one would probably be as grand or the base would be as big. I'm thinking something more. Well, and it doesn't have to be a Yeah, a arch gate, or whatever. Yeah, an arch it could it, be it pillars. It could be an element that is mm -hmm. a gateway mm -hmm. sort of that mm -hmm. is a design element. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, there's you're, you're correct. There's a, there could be a, a kind of vast difference in scale. depends if you're looking for a couple decorative pillars, maybe some mm -hmm. lighting, and, 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 and quite honestly, it's an opportunity to bring in the public art to, to help with that design, um, to help have those folks help us out with that, versus a, com a complete structure where you have a steel structure that, that spans from mm -hmm. pillar to pillar. It starts to be a little bit different scale. That's right. We, mm -hmm. could, we, right. we could look at those, but I think we'd need to see as a commission if that's what you'd like us to do. Um, if you would like us to, if you'd like to change, modify the budget, I mean, it, you could modify the budget now. It could bid and come in under, it might bid and it might not come in under. We don't know. Uh, I mean, we try to, staff tries to estimate this stuff high enough that surprises are positive, which means you're going to get a lower cost. But we can't guarantee <laughs> that. Well, and I, and We're I, do, need that. I, I yeah. do think if you did it in conjunction with right. redoing the, the center lane, and quite frankly, the, the, the brick on those intersections is, is a nice touch because it does give you that. Mm -hmm. The median though, I think if you started at Oakdale, it makes good design sense to start there. All, I don't know that it really accomplishes much to go further east with it because the, the character of, the, of that area is residential. Mm -hmm. And so it really does, it's not, you turn off of there, help. I think you start to get nice you bike so? lanes and mm -hmm. stuff so, you, so you're recognizing that it's something different but as you get closer to the downtown, I think you start to see some uh, an increase in some of these design elements and so on that it kind of marks it as as a destination. And yeah, with Oakdale to front being just the, kind of the one block, we've got quite a few blocks east of there, and that would significantly right. help mm -hmm. us. On mm -hmm. I think we need to go on. ahead with our with what we've already talked about. That's my feeling that we should go ahead with this, and then when we want to look at the gateways for all the different intersections, then we can. Be sure that they they aren't all completely different, and that they're more uh, uniform. 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 I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, but I, if we just start doing it now, helter skelter. Well, I don't I, I don't really deem it as as a helter skelter type thing, just because we're designing the entire road package, and I see that as part of. Well, maybe we need to go package. back to the drawing board then. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think what we're looking now. at is that if it's if it's a doable thing with. Uh, without adding cost. Mm -hmm. um, Commissioners, let me, let me throw out something. I guess I need to ask Dan this. Dan, obviously, if we say, okay, here's the scope, we could, we could add that on the east side of Iron there, uh, west side of the project, but east of downtown, I should say, on Iron, yeah. some form of a, a, a gateway, and we could look at concepts there. Uh, we could add that to the scope, leave the budget at 2.747, and then here's the question for you, I guess, is, is which of these items, if any, do you believe we could look at as a, a, a possible add alternate or add uh, delete type item, um, kind of making reference possibly to the uh, 
the center lane colored concrete, stamp colored concrete, maybe mm -hmm. east of Oakdale. That might be a pretty easy one to do an yeah, add delete or a delete mm -hmm. type mm -hmm. item if mm -hmm. we need to. Yeah. Do you think that we have enough that is truly something that we can play with on, from the bidding that we can come back with the bids? And if the bids come in very competitive, it might not even be a question. Right. It's very possible right. it won't, or it might be a minor question. Or if it's a bigger question, we look at the trade offs. And then what you would right. have is you'd have a decision at that time of, um, do you do you uh, substitute? Uh, do you add, uh, or do you not do it at all? You could still make that decision yeah, then yeah. once you see the bids. In a project that's 2.7 million, if we're talking about anywhere from 50 to 100 thousand dollars, it could it may not even be a question. It's just hard to tell. Right, right. I, I do like that. So I if like you, if you like that, we could put that in scope, leave the number the same, and then we could uh, design the bid package in a way that could give you some options when right. we come back. What, with the what bids. are we looking at from a time scale? When would this kind of need to be in? And and uh, and maybe we can ask Brad how long he thinks it might take his crew or to. We are. Um, we feel like we're losing the window to get this constructed okay. really well this, this year. I guess I just have to be frank about that. Um, to, we're late in March, almost April. We'd have to get final design plans and just actually bid. And it just seems that we will have a lot going on and we'll have a lot of contractors working for us starting in June. So mm -hmm. it's, it's mm -hmm. a uh, concern that once you bid a large project like this that Everybody's pretty busy at that point, so yeah. I feel like it'd be better I th I think to package this. Like it'd, it'd be better to package this into 2015 at the beginning of 2015 to really hit it hard and and do a lot of that during when school's not in session as well, which is kind of a, a key. Yeah, it would be here. nice. So, uh, I I mean, uh, so we're not in a huge hurry, I guess. If this if that's a, I mean, the road is you know, it's not in great shape, but it's not. It's actually one of the ones that doesn't have as many potholes as the other ones that we have. So well, I guess my only it. concern, I'm, I'm all for adding, adding the gateway. I think I think Salina needs it. I think there's some potential redevelopment going on downtown that, that could use that statement that, that I've, again, been a fan of since the beginning. And, and I agree. I mean, if it comes in under budget, adding the sign is going to seem like a simple thing. I, I mean, I keep going back to Lindsburg, that simple little entryway of their arch and the and the row of lights, and it really looks classy. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I just feel like that's what we're trying to do here. Um, and if we can keep the cost down, I, I'm not, a, I mean, I, it wouldn't hurt my feelings to lose that stamped concrete from, from Oakdale back. I think that would be a great trade-off. I mean, yeah, I think. I, and a question on that, I mean, just, just to be clear, mm -hmm. to be able to do the full width and concrete is going to, I mean, because the 20000 is just what it would be. They, they bid the road figuring that it's going to be 12 lanes, 12 lanes, and then middle. Right. But if they can do the whole thing, I mean, that's quite a help. bit, yes. quite yeah, yeah. a bit more. Right. And right. Not only that, but time, Speed, and, yeah. time mm -hmm. and headaches with traffic and everything might uh, even be mitigated. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if you have, I don't know, I'm going to throw this out kind of anecdotally, but at least $50,000 to play with in there. I, I would think I so. Just because right. of the uh, logistical efficiencies that they gain. Right. Uh, more than anything else. I do have a concern, though. Um, I agree with uh, Commissioner Crawford a little bit about having what I heard this morning was sea of asphalt. Well, this would be a, could be a sea of concrete east of Oakdale instead of having that same impact feel from the beginning of the project to the end of the project. Mm. And uh, the other part that I was also concerned about, though, I like the gateway idea. Um, but if we delay that too much, then you will, you're talking about future commissions who may not have the same feelings about gateways that this commission has. So I, it, it, I'm, I'm kind of caught between doing something now and, and hoping that people will see the, the benefit of, of moving ahead with gateways down the road. Mm -hmm. and, and I think part of that, the, the idea about just three lanes of concrete versus something down the middle being, I, I think when you do hit the three lanes of or the concrete center island and concrete, it kind of, you have a sense of arrival, like you're, you're somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like now this mm -hmm. is something different. Mm -hmm. And so that's one thing, the cost thing is another. And then just the third thing on that is just the precedent we set by saying we're gonna take it all the way out on that street the next time we do uh, Iron Street on the other side outside that way, do we go clear down to uh, college with it or do we end sort of the special treatment at 9th Street? I mean it's kind of I think it sets up uh, a precedent that says do we really want to uh, make it kind of mm -hmm. that be the precedent. So there are a number of things that I'm kind of looking at on that thing and and uh, just a way to get a little bit more bang for the dollar that, that that's going to be there. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well I, I like the idea of, of retaining what we have if 
it, it, we, we get a lot of bang for the buck. Right. Yeah, I think we can give you that option so that when, it's, when it comes to bid time, you have that. And what, due to the timing, if we move quickly on the bids, there certainly wouldn't be probably time to design this gateway. But if, if there's enough work to simply uh, know uh, kind of the footprint of right. the location, so right. those design plans could be prepared for that. Um, and then maybe that point sort of estimate, and this is the budget for it. And so we know when you get when you get your bids and you get these options and you get the total bid, uh, we get the breakdowns here on any deducts or anything. You can play with that allocation uh, for it, even if we don't know exactly what's going to be there. And then there should be plenty of time to design and, and come back and put mm -hmm. that in. So I think we have a means to accommodate that with a 2.747 budget if you want to include it in the scope where you have decisions that you can make when we get the, the bids back to you. I like it. So how do we have, would we have to reward that to include that in the scope? I, uh, let's see what we have here. Um, let's approve the scope uh, for the Iron Avenue Reconstruction City Project number 133008 as submitted. It's not a resolution, doesn't appear, so it's just a motion. Mm -hmm. um, so so I would, you would probably do as recommended uh, and at the budget as recommended, but with the inclusion of some form of gateway uh, right. structure to be mm -hmm. considered. Right. Considered in the future. In the future right. for that project. Would that yeah. be done by Arts and Humanities as far as like a maximum cost, or are we thinking of? A word in edgewise. <laughs> Well, Brad, you know, you did get that pat on the back. You might be. Yeah, don't push that, it. Yeah, don't yeah. push it. <laughs> no, my, my question would be, uh, and the first thing that community art and design, if, if it's handed back to us, we'd try to work as quickly and efficiently as we could with the time constraints that Dan and the other group has. But, but one of the first questions that we'd ask uh, you or, or that would be helpful for us to know, gateways aren't just arches. It could be right. plantings in the right-of-way. It could be a series of banners. Uh, that was attached to the lights that were already there that could be flexible and change with seasons at maybe a, a much larger cost over the next, or smaller cost over the yeah. next 10 years. Um, it, it could be a variety of things and not just a sign. There's also um, another discussion taking place in the very preliminary stages about an arch and a potentially in another location, mm -hmm. um, that, that maybe that isn't the best way to welcome in terms of scale, but uh, plantings along the right-of-way with uh, beautiful banners and uh, the enhanced lighting that's already there is a beautiful welcome and just needs some enhancement. If you say, no, uh, we want you involved and it needs to only, you know, we only want you to consider an arch, one could just be partnering with the Parks Department, with others to make recommendations of how that entryway might look using the existing spaces we have. If it becomes a design and build project, then it's, it's a little bit more involved. So and I would, are you open to a variety of different interpretations of what an entryway means? Well, I'm I, open to a variety. I, I th I think I'm a open variety to a variety as long as it doesn't increase the cost of this oh, like project. Arches. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think a, a key component is, is we, as I had mentioned before, I know that, you know, this is a gate, the gateway is into downtown. So certainly, um, people, the, the, the BID board, uh, Flint Downtown Inc., whoever, needs to be at that table on helping to kind of determine, well, this is one of the visions we had um, all along as maybe what a gateway looks like with us. So just to make sure everybody's has a little bit of input. So if we're going to leverage that, that, that everybody's kind of on board and and, uh, well, it, um, there's pro there's a v probably a variety of ways that are very effective and, and would make a strong impact and would be able to, to complement what's already being designed in the roadway and the lighting without a significant uh, 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 change to the budget. Right. So if, if you're open to that, then, then it, we, we might be able to, to have th things that are creative. But if, if your heart is set on just one kind of an entry, then, um, then it, it limits our ability to be involved. No, I think, it's a, I, I, yeah. I think all of us are saying it's a gateway, and what yeah. that looks like is open to whatever okay. interpretation. Let's look at options. Yeah, and yeah, look at um, options okay. later. Yeah. Yeah. And that can be Commissioners, part of I, I, I would encourage you. If we, it depends, well, it depends on our time frame for bidding. If we're running the fast route, when I talk about footprint, yeah. if you know what a footprint is, we can design around a footprint. Right. If you have no idea what you might possibly have there, we can't design around yeah, that. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm, I'm feeling because Just, of the old style design of the lights, and I'm no artist here, um, I see something solid. I see, you know, that sort of era 
you know, columns, if there's no arch on it, I still see some form of column. You know, maybe it's boring or whatever else, but it, it seems like an entry window of downtown rambling flowers and things. I, I don't know that that fits my vision, but, but, uh, but there, there are some entryways, for instance, that, and I'm not proposing this, but, sure. you know, hanging baskets of annuals or, or whatever and have flowers or, or something that is with a season or beautiful banners that, mm -hmm. that are along the way that are artistically designed but can be changed uh, on a rotating basis and, and have color and or identity to the different seasons of the town or, or the community are also ways that you create mm -hmm, a, a mm -hmm. boulevard or an entryway. Um, uh, and the plantings, if it was tastefully done and unified, I think do provide a, an opportunity maybe for a flowering variety of things that could be in the right of way that, that could be a, a, mm -hmm. a beautiful processional that isn't high maintenance and, and I, at least it, it, it could be on there. I think some of those decisions could be made relatively easy and keep things on track, yeah. mm -hmm. um, but if it's a if it's a construction or, or a more complicated design element, um, I, I I just I don't want the uh, well I, an aesthetic I, I think, element yeah, to interrupt. Yeah, I think the, we I think already we're, we we've got in the budget for trees and some plants and some things like that. But I, I think probably just what I see is something, and I think Commissioner Halsall was kind of saying it's something that has has some significance to it that you've arrived right. right. But I do, but I do know that, and I and I and I don't know, and maybe uh, maybe someone from Salina downtown can speak to maybe a vision that that was there if 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 we know what that. But I mean, just just something because I know that they've talked about that. I know that we're looking at an element. I know we've looked at what would archways cost versus you know pillars or something like mm -hmm. that. So mm -hmm. I think we're looking at kind of something that is substantial and not just. Hang, just not baskets on the poles going in because I think we're going to have that anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. So, more, you know, something that is kind of a, an arrival statement. Okay. If that, uh, hopefully that makes some sort of well, sense. Um, with right, which we could, we talked about bringing that back at a later date. Yeah. We right. can have a plan. Not something we have to decide on right now with no, this no, particular No, no, but it, it's yeah. good for me to but know the scope, scope of the conversation yeah. right. that, that, that we have because it, uh, I, this is a little bit, uh, when we talked about policy, yeah. it's, it's a little inconsistent with the policy. We don't I, yeah, I definitely see a planting on top. Of a large pillar. I, I, <laughs> but other than that, <laughs> but other than that design away. Yeah, I don't yeah. think we're going to agree on it. Yeah, right. Kind of don't leave it to us. Oh, Listen, we're, we're the we'll we'll probably yeah, get we're three votes. Commissioners, yeah, in, yeah, uh, yeah. In, in speaking with Dan, one thing I wanted to confirm is that our, if we're really too late to bid in this construction year, if we are, and we would in essence bid this project uh, this winter uh, in preparation for the 2015 construction year, you have a lot of time to figure that out. Yeah. But if we were going to move forward today, I don't think all those options we just talked about we can just somehow get to a conclusion without changing our time frame. But uh, uh, Dan indicated that yeah, based on where we are today, we really should uh, start this, bid it later, and start this in the next year's construction year. Now with it's a possibility that your costs are going to go up. They're going to need to be refined. It's just, that's just part of the timing of it. We don't know that for sure, but there's a decent chance it'll go up a little bit. But it does provide ample opportunity to talk about the entryway at a later time if, mm -hmm. so you don't have to reinvent it today. Well, um, why, why can't we... Um, just go ahead with the project and then I mean we can if he's what he's talking about I'm seeing that somewhere around front anyway and that's why would that bother the project well there's a lot there's a lot of questions if you're talking about plantings you're talking about maintenance and water and things that right now we've kind of started to get away from uh, more so than go towards, and it doesn't mean you can't do it. It's just, it's just, it's going to take more conversation. Than that um, we have to look at the room in the right of way. Do you have room to really make an impact that you want to make? There's a lot of. It's, it's a very open-ended uh, sort of clean slate approach to the entryway, mm -hmm. which is different than if you simply said we'd like two pedestals or a bridge or uh, some kind of structure across that you know that's, that that uh, two pedestals holds up. That's a little bit different, in, in which they could say, well, we can figure out probably where the where the uh, where those would be and uh, the footings would be and so forth and design around that. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, but I, my question was, is regardless of what you want to do with the entryway, if you said we don't want to do anything different and here's what we have in front of us, we want to move forward exactly as is, this is the best time to bid later for 2015? And the answer was, and I'd like Dan to speak to that because if the answer is yes, I would, uh, you're going to interrupt, you're going to probably have a two-phase project is what it sounds like. 
But yeah. you could you could do that too, but that's a mobilization question and there could be some questions. Well, I to think that. any increased cost, I mean again, goes against the whole idea of so here trying to save money to be able to put an entryway sign. Um, I think we kind of lose some of that if we wait another year and costs go up and, and uh, I mean I like this thing John brought in today that we were looking at. There was a, a you know, again just some simple ideas, but it did would be committing four corners of downtown incorporated. So maybe I mean it we've got we've got time. We, maybe it's time. Maybe we should we hear have, from uh, downtown. Can you talk about the, the timeline of the project from yeah. um, today to what would be completion of design to bidding to uh, notice to proceed in actual construction right. starting and then how long, how many months, and where that kind of puts us on the calendar? I feel like the, the changes here we can incorporate. But we feel like we've got a couple more months of design. Well, it puts us into end of May, 1st of June. We typically do a 21 to 30, 20, Three to four week advertise that puts us into the end of June if we advertise then. Theoretically, the contractor can start you know, three to four weeks after we bid the project, notice to proceed. So you're looking at an August probably start date, which, okay, maybe you could get July 15th, but you just don't have a great window of opportunity there for a $3 million project or mm -hmm. two and a half to get it, to really get it in without seeing some increased bids. So I'm concerned more with bidding it this year then wait until February of next year when everybody's hungry and yeah. okay yes we could run the risk we could we could risk having something escalate all of a sudden over the next eight months but I feel like that's a bet I, I just feel like that's a risk that's better we have a million dollar cloud ninth coming up we have the landfill we have um, two and a half million dollars in maintenance going on so you know APAC's got quite a bit of that we've got we'll have a concrete rehab job so we'll, I don't know I guess there it's one of those that we've had better luck bidding projects early as possible and by the time April rolls around you're hoping to be about done because you've hopefully beat the other cities you've beat some of the other people you've they've got their work and they're they're hungry and then after that you're risking it there might be some guys still out there want to bid this and bid it well but the risk is more if we bid this in July and hope to get it done in October so you're saying bid this as quick as we possibly can well it's I just don't think we can make it yeah. I mean that was my timeline right. doesn't put us in a, in a window that we we're just we we're up against the wall as far as two more months puts us in June bids and end of June we wouldn't be able to start to August right. we get August September October that's not enough time to make this job work. And, and when we, if we, bid, have to split. if we were to bid this in February, would we be able to have a construction period that took into account more of the summer and right. less less impact with the school? Right. Yeah. You just when you when you started and and bid it in February, you have way more way more opportunities for mm -hmm. you know, good weather. You start May fifteenth when school gets out. You you know you blow and go. The summer is the best, typically the best time for for construction. Right. Sometimes you have a good fall. Sometimes you don't, but we talked about doing that portion at least in front of uh, Oakdale School yeah, right, while right school's out. While school's and if, out, correct. and if we can't start until the August, then we're we don't it would be tough. We're in the thick of it. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if, if you're going to have to, and it does sound like this would have to be a two-season project at this time, and yeah, whatever you might risk uh, in, in increased costs with inflation between now and say uh, May project, you're probably going to offset by remobilization and dealing with winter and all that too. Mm -hmm. And plus, and it gives you more time to really think through and say, okay, what do we want to do with the entry? Mm -hmm. um, and, and it gives us time to also look at those other potential locations uh, going into the downtown so that we could make sure that whatever that, whatever comes out of that could, could be We're working somewhat all four replicated. locations, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. And then come mm -hmm. back with the finalized design here a little bit later this year, maybe this summer and then uh, be just ready to go and have the package ready to go for um, a winter bid in a uh, early or late, I guess be a mid-spring uh, so, contract. So again, just to be clear, your feelings are to wait, wait, wait the bid out. Mm -hmm. Not it has nothing to do with the signage or, or potential. No, it's just, it's just it's, a, a good no, feeling. No, we had a million dollar project. I did look to, we were going iron to front originally. So that was another thing that we ironed, uh, sorry, iron from front to Ohio. So right. that was another, that was the original scope as well. So I did want to clarify, we we're going Ohio to Delaware, which was a little farther, not okay. a lot, but enough farther to where this project has grown big enough to where you, you want to hit this in the middle, the heart of the construction season. It's just really hard to try to fast track a project like this. And, and waiting gives us time to potentially design Look it in entryway. Right. Yeah. Gives us time to argue. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to bring some pictures next time. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to see what I it like. Would get, 
Commissioner Householder time to put his sales presentation That's together. That's why I got to right. get my sales presentation. <laughs> I got to see where this other arch is going first, design. whether yeah. I'm ready to. Um, but, um, but again, also gives us opportunity for a single season yes. construction, which I, I like the idea. I don't like the idea of breaking it up and, like you said, remobilizing yeah. that. We lose some value there. Um, so One we, we still approve this, too. but we, we send it send it on down uh, up with the understanding. construction. Would we yeah, need to table would, it, or are we just? No. I, what I would say, commissioners, if you want to go ahead and approve the uh, scope as submitted by staff, uh, in addition to that, ask staff to look at options for the entryway um, and uh, to the downtown, and then uh, ask staff to prepare for a 2015 construction project. Okay. There we go. I'm going to need to be the liaison on this entryway thing. I'm just, I'm just a little concerned. I, Dude, yeah, I don't want an arch, Commissioner House. What? We don't, we, <laughs> Everybody we don't, loves arches. We don't want a I don't. I want to say <laughs> Reno on it. Yeah. <laughs> Would they yeah. be golden? The golden arch. Well, well, yeah. Commissioner, I guess maybe let me be more specific. When we say approve the scope as is provided, and when we ask staff to look at the entryway, I think to be more clearly, ask staff to utilize their arts and humanities in the CAD process to look at the entryway and then uh, to uh, uh, put this package together for a 2015 construction project. Okay. Someone Any could, if you like I that, suppose. you could say. Any yeah. other questions for staff then? No. Again, a clarification, this isn't the CIC. You want to come up so the, the people at home can hear you, Brad? Yeah. <laughs> I need your name and address, please. <laughs> here. Hit here. Um, yeah. <laughs> Uh, typically, if, if this was a CAD project, it would have a percentage assigned, you know, or it would be part of a scope. Uh, we want to be helpful, but, but we also need to know if we're just serving more an advisory capacity and it's not an official project, um, or uh, is there a, a, up to a portion of the budget or an amount not to exceed so that any of uh, any advice or, or feedback or, or whatever that we'd provide is within the, the budgetary constraints. I, um, there, there are aesthetic enhancements already designed with this project. You've approved lighting mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. stamped concrete and some other things that, that are already an enhancement of the roadway uh, and, and the entryway. So um, I'd just like to have some guidelines going into the, the first meeting that we'd have on what your um, comfort level is. Or I mean, Jason, I don't know if that's you or Dan or, or whatever, but just to make sure that we have an understanding of what our role is. Yeah, I think given the time, clearly we would be treated as a, um, cap a typical capital improvement project. But if you have a thought with regards to the maximum budget that you'd want to spend for the entryway piece, that's a good time to provide. I that would direction. say probably a cap it at a hundred thousand. I mean, unless I would. Yeah, we don't want anything crazy. Yeah. Well, wouldn't that depend on the results from the bid process? Is that what we were talking no, about? No, not anymore. No, That's because yeah. we were going to move it for this construction season. We'd have to sort of arrange how we do the bid. But yeah. at this point, if it's a 2015 project, we have time to actually do this in a more pure fashion mm -hmm. and take our mm -hmm. time. Yeah, and I feel like that. And I would want to point out for anybody at home that's watching or anything else, these are not something that just came up today. We've been talking about entryway signs throughout the town, throughout the highway for downtown. This has been going on for several years now. This isn't just some... We have been discussing it. Most, Commissioner most, mostly Commissioner, and Commissioner Crawford has, has been over there. But it, it's been mentioned, I think, with previous commissions and, 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 and some of this commission. Um, so <laughs> it, it isn't just an idea that's popped up out of, out of nowhere. That's, so it is something that we, we had discussed in the past. So I guess whether it's CIP. Not, not to exceed 5% would, would put it within, uh, on a $2 million project of uh, uh, $100,000 or whatever. Is that your would, would, I mean, if, if, if that was the guideline, then we'd work in any recommendations within that framework. Um, and that, I believe, on the policies, the cap. So if. Uh, well, it, I, 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 do we have on, on an impact street um, if, we're, if we're taking a fresh look at this thing, because the original look at this thing was to say this is simply a pavement replacement uh, or we need project. A, would, would we need a study session on that? Yeah. Oh, we'd come back for an right. multiple. You probably have more than one study session in right. the next few months before we're done. Right. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so can we leave the budget up for that? Because, I mean, if, if don't we need to make the determination whether or not this now, and maybe it needs to go through that level, uh, of scrutiny that says this is now th this is something that should be considered for uh, yeah a CAD. If, if you follow the CAD process I believe it's up to five percent which on a 2.7 million dollar project is roughly about a hundred and thirty five thousand dollars to be just a slightly more but uh, 
that's that would be the maximum for for an art component under the policy there. Um, but Brad's right. He, they kind of need to know what a maximum budget would be, whether it's that five percent level, where it's a hundred, whatever it is. 4%. They really need to know before they, right. yeah, before they get into that, because the artists who would be involved need to know uh, what their budget is as they try to come up with something. Because if if we if they don't have that, they may come up with something and it may be one hundred fifty thousand. Right. Well, well, and also, I mean, if we consider it to be a gateway project, which I think might may or may not be identified as part of or could be considered design enhancements. Uh, I think that probably you might want, w would it be reasonable to consider that some of that designer paving that's in the median now and the gateway all included are part of a art and design component? Or when, when you, it, there's no question that it's, those are those, those pieces we talked about, whether it be lighting, whether it be the, the concrete and so forth are actual their design components, but when you look under the community art and design policy, quite honestly, there's not been any uh, artist uh, uh, involvement in that at all. I don't know that you could consider that to be part of that component. But if you say, well, we don't want to do five percent because we have some monies invested in that, you could say, well, let's just right. do a hundred thousand or a hundred and ten thousand, or just right. set the budget, and that way they know. Right. Do we need to set that budget within this scope here? I think that would I think that'd be helpful. That would yeah. be really helpful like because we'll to, work we'll not work to in partnership with Dan and and or with Parks or anybody else that's involved to make a recommendation. And right. so knowing what that amount is or the proportion of the budget, then there may be conversations we have that say, uh, "Gosh, uh, one of the recommendations we have involved." some component of a planting that was already part of a budget, we may not right. utilize everything that you authorize. But now, would this number be a not to exceed, or would it be a hard number that says? I'd say not to exceed. Not to, yeah. Okay. yeah. Or, yeah. I, yeah. The, the policy calls for a percentage, I believe, and right. so it, what would be not to best is if you had a 2.3 million or whatever, that, and if you said not to exceed 100,000, if I could have permission to just figure that percentage and say that is the percentage of the budget, then if there's some overall movements of that, we have to work within that percentage. If you want to say it's a flat amount, then we'll work with that also. We've, we've worked both ways. Policy mm -hmm. officially mm -hmm. talks about a percentage. So, uh, Commissioner Blanchard, mm -hmm. uh, if we didn't do the stamped concrete that we're talking about, plus we didn't do some of the lighting, we could put that <laughs> gateway. Correct, right. For this amount. And that's the thought, yeah. yeah the thought well, is to try to but stay no, on that, this but amount. That's not, but that's not what you're saying here. No, that that's is. That's not the way I'm understanding you. <laughs> well, that's, that's, how I find the, that's how I find the dollars in that if we keep, if Wait, we keep then the number where Then it is. we'll be voting on what we talked about to begin with. Yeah. Is that a correct? A, no, a number. Yeah. Right. A number. So we got to figure that it's likely that the savings coming off of that may be in the vicinity of, of 100 to 110,000. And I think that's. So we, we would need to amend that and take the, the stamped well, no, at the $75,000 uh, off. Am I right, Jason? I'm figuring your, your number of percentages I, I for you, so I'm not sure I caught yeah, the no, full question. I, I, what I kind of gather was is that, and maybe I'm maybe I shouldn't speak for Commissioner Blanchard, but I think what I gathered and, and where I was going with it was, we're obviously hoping that this at this point we're simply adding on that we would like the gateways. Um, we're obviously hoping that when the bids come in, it still falls in under this number. I, I don't think any one of us necessarily. I mean, I was okay with increasing it if it got us what we wanted. Um, I think you're hoping to keep it under this 2747 number is, is, is really where we're at, and it sounds like you are as well. So I think we're, we're simply saying if the bids come in at that time, we'll have the ability to judge and say, okay, look, the bids came in. It's actually 2747000 but if you want your entryway, it's 100000 At that point, we could say, well, we can't do the entryway. Or if they come in and say, hey, your, your bids came in at $2.5 million, you got money for your entryway. We're still under this original uh, accounted for you know, roughly $2.8 million we could add it i mean is that kind of where you were saying it at I some point I don't, yeah under and when you, when you look at the application of the cad policy once you once the project goes through that you and you have a, a final uh, rec or, uh, design element uh with the project in there you wouldn't expect to trade it off necessarily going through that whole process Correct. so so it does put you in a position that if for some reason the the uh total cost of the project is over the 2.747 million for all this construction aspect of it 
um, it would you, you'd probably be in a position to have to trade off something else in the project. In the project. And we could uh, we would have time to be able to give you some options to sure. trade off sure. on that. Yeah. And uh, so so I think the answer to your question would be yes. The short answer to yeah. the question. I got. It. Um, if, if there was consensus of the group at two point seven, or I mean, and I know you haven't voted and it's not official, but if knowing that and you determine an amount that goes back with that, we would do our best within the project to be. Uh, diligent about any expenditures and the partnerships that would take place with Dan and his group and the designers to come up with something that made a significant impact but stayed within that range so that you wouldn't have to feel like you had to peel it off or it was stuck on because I'd like to think that that it that the work would be done and it would be integrated so you figure numbers over there ultimately I do not want to lose the feel of the impact street mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know I don't want to sacrifice I, d I think it's important to have that design gateway feel to uh, the project but I also don't want to to have it at the expense of losing what we talked about as being an impact street otherwise you're not an impact street anymore yeah I, I think I think components of that impact street though are things like bicycle lanes and the eight-foot pathway I mean there are components all along there that are mm -hmm. impact street but if you components. start yanking the lighting yeah, or, but, yeah, yeah I think the light I think we want to I think the lighting is good because you're you're matching up some of the taller poles with the mm -hmm. and the signals and the pedestrian signs or, or the, the, the school zone signs or whatever they are um, I think that those things you want to kind of keep consistent we're just talking about uh, my point is is just to bring scale back the the stamped colored concrete so I don't know if you're gonna how much you're gonna save by yeah well but I think it's quite I think uh, it's quite a bit when you look at the way the road is constructed when you're looking at instead of three different pours you're looking at a continuous pour I mean there is there is cost savings in the construction of the road because the the center aisle is not just stamped and it's a complete mm -hmm. new batches of concrete with right. the stain mixed in with it and so you need it's poured at a completely different time and it's going to have to be mm -hmm. poured after the other two are poured because those are going to kind of be the forms it, and, and what we might have to do then is amend the scope so that it includes that deduct that uh, we can look at from the contractor's perspective to say okay well uh, we're going to save this much money by not having the stamped concrete is that what we were talking about earlier well, uh, that's where I think you can find some of those savings in that without impacting the impact without adding to but the budget we would have to identify those that. areas of the project that we're talking about because we, we're going to have stamped concrete in some of the Right on intersections the intersections and whatever. the crosswalks. Right, mm -hmm. commissioners. I have a suggestion for you: is to is to is to take the scope the way it is now with with that budget number, uh, just so we have something we can put in your CIP and make sure we're clear on it. Right. Um, to then um, ask us to uh, again utilize the uh, community art and design process so that they can submit a gateway design element um, at whatever that price level is that, that you agree on, and bring back bring back the, for final consideration the project. Uh, probably late 2014 somewhere in that time frame because at that point we should have a refined budget estimate on the whole project and, and design will be ready it'll be done and that's the best uh, the estimate you're going to get is at the end of right. design right have you make that decision at that point in time based on what we think that that final design estimate would be so you can they can then debate if you want to take something out or what have you we can give you those options and then uh, at that point in time we'll have direction and we can bid it for a 2015 construction project Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because you don't, you don't really, given the time we have, you don't really have to figure out that Not every final budget right it, now. Yeah. We really need to just know what the budget is for the uh, for the CAD process, for the uh, entryway and or gateway, and then uh, we can bring all that back to you when we're kind of finalized with that. We, uh, we're going to have to reestimate this a little bit going into next year anyway. We can get you what we believe is that number. It might be the same. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. Um, and then you can have the opportunity to, to, to look at the ads or, at, or the deducts or the uh, ad alternates, whatever that style might be at that point in time. You don't have to figure Where's that out. Where's 3.75 get us on that? Does that get us about to the 100? About 100,000. Oh, two, well, 
it, uh, at, at, at a, a project right now using the construction cost of 2747000 which is what's in the sheet, 5% uh, uh, would give you 137350 to work with for that entryway element. What's, what's uh, 100000 is about 3.64%. Okay, yeah. We may never get this straight down. <laughs> and so, and so does, is, it, is it advisable to go with the percentage then? And that that that's a float, or I guess that's what we need to decide here. But as it, far it's, as how, it's how up is to it you, the policy says up to. So a lot of a lot of times that discretion falls over to the CAD process. But I th I mean it, when you look at this project and you look at that scale, hundred thousand is a pretty good budget too. So right. it's really up to you. If you want to say we want to do this, but we want to. Cap it at a hundred thousand. That's fine. Or we could go four percent. Um, that's you could go four percent. Yeah, it's a little bit more. Um, that's a lot really of up signage. To you. Yeah. Up to you. <laughs> okay. Well, yes. yeah. And, and well, is it not to exceed? Your, okay. Your final concept, you know, is I mean, that's what's going to dictate it. Although I'll, I'll tell you, if you if you indicate you want to spend up to a certain amount, it's a pretty good chance you're going to get options right. to get you up to a certain amount. Yeah, I like the right. fifty thousand dollars <laughs> sign, but I mean, I mean, probability. But uh, I'd like to think a couple of pillars with an arch wouldn't cost more than. <laughs> not not to complicate it anymore, but um, Dan and I were just talking. In terms of gateway and aesthetic enhancement and having six months to to work as both a committee and in partnership with the other departments, um, uh, setting a percentage on the overall all amount and, and allowing the CAD committee to look at what is currently being proposed as a design and, and to just offer an entire design package we may bring things that you're currently cutting off back on because we've saved right. some money or not spent as much as we thought. We might be able to do something else. So if, if you give us the freedom to just within a budget and a percentage to be able to work together to come back with something that, that speaks to the impact street and your intent as a commission, then I, I think we'll have a, a, a reasonable uh, and appropriate option. So. Thank you, Brad. Do we have any public comment on this matter? I'll go ahead. I'll be very brief. Melissa Hodges from Salina Downtown. I was really excited to hear about this today, so I just wanted to let you know that Salina Downtown is ready to um, do whatever we can to support the, um, the addition of a gateway. I'm assuming from your talk that this is for one gateway, correct? And then we would work up to the other four? or the other three, so that we have a total of four. I just wanted to be sure about the, the scope of the work that I was understanding that correctly. So yeah. anyway, that's it. Thank you. Thanks, if Melissa. we can Thanks agree for... on it, yeah. <laughs> that would be the next question. <laughs> Any other public comment? Yeah. With that, I'd bring it back to the commissioners. Okay, I'll take a stab at this motion here. <clears throat> um, Madam Mayor, right. I move that we establish a design scope for the iron Avenue reconstruction from Front Street to Delaware Avenue, City Project Number 13-3008, with the inclusion of a gateway feature, utilizing community arts and design and CAD process, with a uh, budgeted amount not to exceed four percent. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? That motion carries five zero. Thank you, Mr. Sack. Thank you. Thank you. Item 7.2, resolution number 14-7088, initiate proceedings for street and intersection improvements in the city of Salina, Kansas. Mr. Franz. <laughs> Sorry, Rodney. Franz. <laughs> you I do only that got on two purpose. more weeks of doing that. Two more weeks of doing that. <laughs> Well, now is probably not the time to throw a curveball. But, <laughs> no, but, uh, please. I'll I, go I, ahead. I would suggest that considering the action taken on this last item, that you simply defer consideration of the project authorization until you have a better defined idea of the scope and cost of what you're talking about. It would prevent us from having to do this again. So or bring possibly this back. Third time. Yeah, I, I just don't think it makes any sense. No. To Sounds like a good yeah, idea. Completely, yeah, completely, completely agree. Completely agree. Swipe an object off the agenda. Number. So would this one be tabled? Or? Uh, I, I would defer to 
Mr. Bankston on that, I believe just defer consideration or whatever. I think yeah. tabling would require to a specific time, and that's not something we know at yeah, this point. If, if you just go ahead, Greg. I was say, I think Mr. Gage has a suggestion on how to approach that. Yeah, uh, if you just want to ask staff, consensus ask staff to defer consideration of this until we finalize this project scope, um, that's fine. We, we don't need to, if you if you use the postponed term <clears throat> by Robert's Rules of Order, that's a particular date and we don't right. know what that is, you're better just to, we're comfortable, we all know if you say we don't want to deal with this today because we're not ready, right. we'll right. just defer it, please bring Thank it back to us. That's all we need to know and if you just want to shake your heads and say that's yeah, fine, okay. that fine. works for sounds us. great. So will we need to do that with our next item too? Let's look Before Daniel next comes item. back up here. The federal funds exchange for iron, um, it's a good question. Um, I'd have to defer to Dan on the timeline for that, but I, I'm expecting the answer to be yes. Okay, so we'll go ahead and uh, well, do our motions for this one, then go back to that. No, let's motions. go ahead. Let's go ahead on this on seven point two. If you uh, if you just want to say ask the rest of the group, okay. are you comfortable just deferring this until later in the year, until we're finalized in scope, and everybody says yeah, we are. That's good enough. And then we'll go to the next one. Group, are you comfortable? Yes. Yes. Everybody, yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So no <laughs> action you. on this one. It, it kind of dies. And, and I'll ask Dan to come up on the next one because it. I don't know how this affects the timeline from right. a KDOT perspective. Okay. Mr. Stack. Yeah. That was quick. Yeah. This one is. Um, I'm not sure how this. We have to turn in a request to exchange funds, but it doesn't have to be for Iron Street. It can be for whatever, whatever project we deem appropriate or any. It's really just. Um, can be used for we've got so many projects that can be used for some overlays concrete rehabs it doesn't matter so we just really basically want to ask for your um, uh, that you would uh, authorize the city manager to sign the request and we can always I guess if that's if it's is he is he Jason were you asking just for Iron Street on this is that what you're well, I think that's the question because if, if Iron Street, if we're going to be asking for the federal funds exchange later for Iron Street, we don't want to, we still want to utilize the exchange for another project or projects this year. And so we may need to take an action. Probably the question is do we need to bring that action back? Do you need to refine it? Yeah, we want to get the exchange started for, and this is 2014, so we, tip, we won't get an agreement till middle of the summer and we can't use the funds till fall. So it's, we wouldn't, we'd probably have this as a 2015 project anyway. Um, as far as the funds go, we've gotten 20, we haven't gotten reimbursed for our 2013 project yet, which was the last part of East Magnolia. So we need to turn that in. And then these funds wouldn't be available till, what does it say? It says it's now available. I don't know why we couldn't get that, but we can't, we can't get the money back till we have a, a project. So you want me to go back and look at a different project for 2014? I guess we could. Yeah, I think as long as we know we have the exchange uh, dollars available for Iron Street in 2015, yeah. we don't want to gap if we have the ability to uh, obtain the funds for 2014 for a different project. Okay, I'll check into that. I th I'm pretty sure they can be banked. Um, that's, that's what a lot of cities do. They bank two or three years worth so they can have a big project. So I'll just have to see how that works. I don't but, know if you want to bank this them for one, Iron or do you want to... Um, maybe, yeah. I think on this one, Commissioner, is probably the best thing to do, and that can, we can find out in a couple of weeks within yep, the two-week time frame. To you. That'll Let's work. go ahead and postpone okay. this postpone. one for the two-week time frame back to the next regular meeting, and we should have a response and an action for you on this one. Sounds do we need good. to make a motion for that one, or we all well, shake our head on that I one? I would do what a motion on that, that one. Okay. April what is the next meeting? April <laughs> the 7th, yeah. Okay. Yep. Thank probably you. should still, just because it's a published thing, still ask for public input, don't you think? Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, not that... Open uh, to public meeting. Yeah. 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 Do we have any public comment on this matter? Seeing none, I'd bring it back to the commission. <laughs> Madam Mayor, I move that we postpone uh, this item uh, discussing project 13-3008 until April 7th, 2014. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? That motion carries 5-0. 7.4, award the Municipal Solid Waste Landfill Facility Cell 19 Construction, project number 14-3022. Mr. Sack. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor and Commissioners again. I actually thought this one would be the tough one, so we'll see which one. <laughs> no, really should, should, easy, we do, should we do a bathroom <laughs> break real quick? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> this, is my, uh, this is our Municipal Solid Waste Landfill, and... Brief. See, our last project was done in 2010, so that's our <clears throat> 14. Or this is 14, so we're uh, anticipating.
constructing the next cell here in 2014. Uh, so we can start putting waste in it in 2015. So typically our cells last about five years. Um, kind of have a little history on here about our cells when we first started. We opened in the first subtitle D landfill in 94 and we've been constructing cells ever since. Um, in 2013 we actually did get our master plan approved. So that was something that was in the works for a couple of years and so we kind of have an idea which which cells we want to keep opening each year and then this project also includes a, uh, a leachate pond, which helps us in our long-term um, handling of our leachates. We don't have to, we construct basically one wet well and one pump in this project, and then we're not, we don't have to construct that anymore after this. So we feel like that's a good, a real bonus for this project that we're um, gonna be able to construct that this time. I have a lot of detail here on the project. <clears throat> so I, that wasn't the last time Mike did this back in 2008. This is what we did. So I thought, well, I'll tell you all the cubic yards of dirt that we have to move and the many, uh, many acres of uh, HDPE high permeable or low permeability liner with the clay liner as well, the sand filter layer, a lot of HDPE gravity drain pipe, which is the, which usually we have a force main, but in this case we can gravity drain it down to the leachate pond. A lot of uh, access roads and a little bit more paving that we put on the road that actually goes into the landfill. And basically the electrical service for the wet well and associated drainage ditches. So um, we did actually have a decent engineer's estimate on this, so we were excited about that. The last one wasn't, uh, a few years ago we were a little high and our project was low and so in this case we felt like we were right on the money and it turned out we were so it was a good we had very competitive bids four contractors uh, bid the project and Spore Land Development is uh, a company out of Oakley they've actually built two projects with the uh, um, uh, let's see I can't remember exactly they told me where they were um, contractor has worked with our consultant before and has done very good work and had a, a really long um, very long list of projects that they've done. So many leech, many ponds and lagoons, and they just, they definitely look like they're a, pro, a contractor that has um, done these type of projects before, should be able to meet the, uh, the uh, estimated completion date, which is 145 days from when we start. And we do have some, some hefty liquidated damages on this project because we really need to get it open in the in the or get it done in the fall so we can put uh, waste in it in the uh, uh, 2015. Uh, the last time we got we felt like we were up against the gun in our last in our last um, cell and it took it takes a while to construct the cell and get KDHE approval and then to actually get everything put in it. So we, we feel like we we're in good shape this time to uh, have a good contract. We're going to be able to construct it over the over the summer and which is um, finished in the fall. So. Um, I guess I'll just uh, ask any questions. I guess we would recommend approval with 4% contingency and stand for questions. Do we have any questions for staff? Okay, thank you, Mr. Sack. Thank you. Do I have any public comment on this matter? Seeing then I'd bring it back to commissioners. Madam Mayor, I, I, just a comment on this. Uh, wasn't a question for them, but it seemed like the bids were pretty pretty close. It's disappointing that our local contractor wasn't the 1% lower than the <laughs> than the out-of-town one, but... Oh, well. you know, what do you do? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, what do you do? So, But anyway, I did, you know, hopefully the... Uh, Everything goes smoothly on that. So anyway, I uh, I would make a motion, uh, Madam Mayor, that we award the uh, award of the Municipal Solid Waste Landfill Facility Cell 19 Construction City Project Number 14-3022. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Same sign. That motion carries 5-0. 7.1. Uh, award contract to complete repairs on the Salina landfill scale. Mr. Fraser. Uh, Madam Mayor and Commissioners, uh, the current landfill scale that we have was installed in uh, 1994. It was purchased used at that time, so I can't really tell you how old it is, but it has been in service here in Salina for 20 years. 
the concrete deck has been repaired seven or eight different times and that the uh, condition it continues to deteriorate underneath the surface with the concrete and that it's reached a point where it's just lost the concrete strength and it really needs to be replaced. Mm -hmm. um, we contacted three different companies to get bids on the uh, scale, Salina scale, uh, Hamill scale, and Fairbanks scale. Only one of the three companies submitted a bid. Uh, Salina scale submitted a repair uh, bid of $29,150 uh, with 1.5 days to repair that. That would be from a Saturday afternoon to Monday morning. Uh, the replacement option that we asked, uh, that would cost $63,240 plus $8,500 for the scale rental that's, would, that would be needed for the seven to 10 days that the scale would be out of service. So for a total bid of $71,740. Um, and as I said, is it the, uh, the, the companies that we contacted, Hamill Scale and, and uh, Fairbanks Scale, both uh, said that they did not bid because they had conflicting work schedules. So that's why they didn't submit no. a, a bid to us. Um, staff believes that the repair option is our best choice and that the only component that is not being replaced with this is the skeletal steel structure of the scale. Everything else is being replaced uh, for the uh, for the the scale, uh, and we feel that the we've had that inspected by Salina Scale, and they say that the skeletal structure is still sound, so it really doesn't need to be replaced. Uh, if approved, the installation would take place in May. Uh, they have to construct the deck to f to fabricate that, and that takes from eight to ten weeks for them to be able to to uh, to build that deck that sits on top of the uh, all the mechanisms that they've got. Uh, staff has identified the following uh, options and uh, recommends option one, the award of the contract to Salina Scale for the repair of the landfill scale in the amount of $29,150. I'd be happy to try to answer any of your questions. Do we have any questions for staff? Yes, uh, Mr. Frazier. Um, on this, it, it, it sounds like it's w with, the, with the language in your blue sheet here that, that this is pretty unstable and that mm -hmm. there wasn't anything in the budget seems to indicate that it wasn't exactly, we probably figured maybe a year or two from now. Um, this thing isn't in any danger of, I mean, are we waving off really heavy equipment or what, how are we handling that? Well, the, the condition of the scale is, is in very poor condition because of the deterioration of the concrete that's underneath that. What we've tried to do to be able to, to repair that is we've put patches of uh, plate metal on top and welded that together to be able to provide some strength. The problem is we've got seven or eight of those those pieces of plate metal on top that are that are attached to each other. The concern is that the scale really does need to be replaced as soon as possible to avoid that from breaking loose. And if that, because there's the concrete underneath the metal, mm -hmm. but the concrete's breaking away and so we're just putting metal on top of it to bridge it. So it needs to be replaced. It needs, it as, needs as to be repaired or replaced. The concrete part. Okay. And so, we, so when we, we went out, is that we said, okay, well, how much would a repair cost? And then how much would the replacement of the, a brand new scale, full scale replacement cost? And those were the differences, is that the repair of, of this would cost the $29,150. Right. And then it would be $71,000 if they put everything new back in. But we really don't need that. We don't need everything new. No, okay. so staff is recommending is that the skeletal structure is still good uh, based on the, uh, the inspection that was done on, uh, by Salina Scale. And so we don't need to spend the $71,000. We can have just exactly what we need for the $29,150. And that $29,150, is that in line? Because being that it wasn't budgeted, we didn't have an estimate for it or anything else. How, how does that fall in line with... with uh, like a typical cost of that because we did not get any other, the other right. two firms did not right. bid. Well, that's right. Is it, we have funds in the solid waste fund to cover the expense, but we don't really have anything to compare it to. Right. Um, Com commissioners, real quick on that though, it, just from the bid process perspective, at, at the, of course, there were multiple potential bidders and uh, 
Uh, of course, Solana Scale was the only one who submitted a bid, but at the time they submitted, they didn't know, uh, to our knowledge, they wouldn't have known it, but the other two right. bidders that are on the list were not going to. That's correct. So if there's kind mm -hmm. of a measure of as competitive as they can be, we don't have actual bids, but at least we know, they knew they were in a competitive process, so for what it's worth, that tells you they probably tried to be competitive right, and because right. right. they were competing. Because they didn't know, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. But yeah, we just simply don't have a number to measure it against, yeah. but right. we know that. And I can say is that based on the cost of, of what a new scale would cost, that the repair is going to give us everything that we need, it seems to be a reasonable price and a fair price for, for us to pay. Sure. But, there's, but I don't have anything to compare it to to show you. Okay. Any other questions for staff? Is there any, any, any other municipalities around here that we share information back and forth with that have done any of this recently? Or? Uh, municipalities really don't really do landfills. There are county operations that would. Is it uh, in the area Reno County uh, is, is a subtitle D landfill that's in the area of, of Salina. Okay. But you're comfortable with this, that this cost is yes. not out of line or? Yeah, I, I, f I feel comfortable this is, a, this is a fair price. Okay. Any other questions? Any public comment on this matter? That is really shocking. Any any other comments from anybody else on the matter? Mm -hmm. Just <laughs> randomly, anybody home on the phone in? <laughs> All right. All right, uh, Madam like Mayor. Then, yeah, I would uh, move to award the contract uh, for the repair of the scale to Salinas scale in the amount of 21 or sorry twenty nine thousand one hundred and fifty dollars uh, using option one second I mean you guys spend two million dollars you don't even hesitate twenty nine thousand there's like a pause <laughs> I know. man I, um I was thinking that same thing. I was thinking actually. about the art element. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a motion in a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries 5 0. D just a quick, just to, just to make, uh, uh, make sure a house cleaning. On, on the motion I made on the last issue, um, didn't include who the award was to and the amount. Do we need that? Should we, should we have had that? That in should there? be part of it, I would say. Yeah. I had left that part out of my motion. Yeah, I think that'd be good. So I need to bring item 7.3 back, or was it 7.4? 7.5. 7. 7. No, 7.4, we have 4, yeah. You just named it clar clarify, clarify it. To clarify it? If you, um, I would think for purposes of the minutes that you could clarify that with the concurrence of your fellow commissioners. Okay, I would ask concurrence on a modification to the motion on 7.3. Uh, to include um, award of the contract to Spore Land Development Inc. in the amount of two million two hundred ninety-one thousand one hundred twenty-nine dollars, with a four percent construction contingency uh, of nine ninety-one thousand six hundred and forty-five dollars and sixteen cents. I concur. That's all you need. Concur. Yours and the others. Yeah. <laughs> so I, all, all those in favor? Really? No, just all concur. Yeah. We all concur. 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 We're yeah. to shake our heads again. Yeah. We all well, concur, it, yes. We an indication okay. for I, I apologize record. for leaving that out. Yeah, no, that's fine. It happens. And I think if we're done, I'll, I would move to adjourn. No. We, no? Uh, we have other business. Other business. Okay. No second on that then. <laughs> so we had no, no. development business. Yeah. Do we have other business? I would like to throw out an idea. This is, uh, we, we've been talking about impact streets, and I was, um, the thought occurred to me that maybe we ought to talk about maybe an impact district. And uh, I'm thinking specifically about the downtown area where, and I, you know, and I, I travel 8th Street a lot, and uh, coming down to City County Building, and that street just looks pretty horrible. Uh, it's, it's repaired well. There's crack ceiling that was, was done a couple, three years ago, something like that. Uh, and but the ride is not oh, good, I know you're and it, and it's right. I travel that road a lot. Too. You do, well, yeah, you do too. And um, and I'm thinking, we, we if we want to take good care of the the gateways to downtown, why don't we treat downtown a little differently when it comes to things like um, matching up our our street repairs, say the crack ceiling with a microsurfacing 
to follow not long afterwards to give it a more uniform appearance and, and a better ride. And we could, dis de we could determine what that district would be, you know, like, well, if we wanted to go from ninth to fourth or whatever. Uh, but I think that the streets that are around the downtown area probably are more important than other streets out in the communities because these are the streets we want. We want people to come to downtown and to, and to think good things about Salina. And, and, and I, I think that everything we're talking about will contribute to that, that same feeling. But if, we, if our streets look good, and maybe Commissioner Blanchard said something about curbs and gutter, too, that probably could uh, use some attention as well to, to treat downtown as, uh, or that zone as a, um, as a special area that deserves that maybe more attention than some of the other parts of the city. It's too easy to say I think all our streets are important. That's just too easy for me to walk in and say, and, and, and it is. I, I do appreciate the fact, though, and, and I think we are kind of putting our pavement plan together, the idea or concept maybe that downtown isn't necessarily more important than any other streets. Well, well I agree. I, I do think it's important for, for people visiting Salina and Salina people as well. The concept of making sure that we're doing repairs all in one area kind of one time does make sense to me, so it's consistent and across the board. But I would say that citywide is probably a good idea, and I think we do, are working on this pavement kind of master plan that we've discussed. Uh, yeah, that, from a maintenance perspective, and I may need to defer to Mike on this, but we, we usually can do more mileage, I believe, of crack sealing than we can microsurfacing just by virtue of the unit cost of that. So that's why you'll typically see some, well, we try to do a lot of the microsurfacing after we do the crack sealing and within, a, whether it's a year or two years or three years, something like that. But uh, quite honestly, the way we're funded right now, we can do more crack sealing. It's really important to keep the water out of the cracks. So that's like the primary first thing you want to do. And, and the microsurfacing actually helps and provides even more life with that. So if we're talking about matching up throughout the whole city, what we'd have to do is probably somewhat significantly reduce our crack sealing mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. volume or, or mileage to increase our microsurfacing. Uh, that's probably a bigger question. From a downtown town, excuse me, from a downtown perspective though, if you'd like to if you'd like for us to just simply say, okay, when in dealing with the downtown, we don't have to say it's better or not better, but right. just generally speaking, um, if we're going to do crack sealing, can we match up and try to get with the very next cycle of microsurfacing? And if you want a, a somewhat, a little bit higher, I guess, level of maintenance with regards to curb and gutter and some of those general things, if you just tell us that, we, from a practical perspective, we know that we can prioritize that downtown area and we can do that. Um, so that might be the easiest thing to do rather than the community-wide. It's a little harder community-wide because what's going to happen is, is that it causes a values question as to how many miles of streets can we not right. get that those cracks filled and that life will be impacted by those right so more functional whereas in the downtown we can we can deal with that without probably affecting as much of the other uh, yeah i think uh <clears throat> i think that i think we all recognize that the downtown is kind of our is everybody's Mm -hmm. And everybody identifies the city does. So I think that from time to time there do c come items that, you know, we definitely want to make sure that we pay attention to when it, when it comes to that. So I think that, there is, that there's merit in, in looking at making sure that we recognize that it is, it is, it says a lot about us as a community what our downtown looks like. So. I don't know how that translates into any sort of... Yeah, you can look at it a lot of ways, but when you think about the type of lights we're putting in, the type of trash containers, the type of benches, there, there's no question in the downtown, and really since the late 80s project, there have been more amenities in, focused in downtown than other places that we maintain. And that's because even back then, I think it's fine for folks to say downtown is really the heart of the community. Uh, and, and the other places are great, and we, we do try to make sure that South Ninth is, is maintained well and, and other streets are maintained well, and we do projects for those. But there's always been a desire to make sure we we put our investment in downtown and, and make it the heart of our community and, and, and you know have that be complementary to our community. So you're not really doing anything different than before. It's just being clear about a couple of ways that you'd like us to do it. So it's really mm -hmm. up to you. Um, we can deal with the street. Uh, crack ceiling microsurfacing in downtown pretty easily. It's not a, a huge volume for us to deal with. Um, and, and, you know, if you say, please, if there's, if we're behind on curb and gutter, if you want us to try to get to the downtown curb and gutter, unless there's some functional impact somewhere else, we can do that. That's, that's not a big deal. 
it's really just up to the direction you want to provide. Yeah, I just I just think about times when like the River Festival time when you're going to have people coming from all over to downtown and if uh, what they're going to take their impression away. And maybe I notice you know the ride on Eighth Street more because uh, I'm I'm paying more attention to those things now, and 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 maybe people don't pay attention mm -hmm. to what the mm -hmm. the streets look like. But in my way of thinking, if we keep them dressed up well, then people may come to town and they'll say, oh, we got, we got to come here more often. This is yeah. kind of a nice place to be. Yeah, they probably won't even notice the streets, though, with the, with, with the new arch. Yeah, you need the more new beautiful arch things to going into <laughs> iron downtown. That arch is probably going to distract them. Distract them, them definitely. <laughs> Starting a sales job already. I'm getting yeah, my arch. I know. <laughs> telling you. Any other business? Hey, just uh, uh, thanks to the... R real, real quick. Yeah. I'm sorry, Commissioner. I didn't want to interrupt this. you, but... I didn't yeah. know if there was any consensus on uh, Commissioner Hardy's request. I wanted to make sure, see if there was. I, I, I like the idea of, I, again, I'm with you. I don't want to say that we, we prioritize any street or any area is more important. I do think we, if we can in any way coordinate um, crack ceiling with microservicing uh, and kind of try and make it at least a little bit more of a package, it is one of our presentation areas of town. We want all areas to look nice, but I would agree, I would concur that downtown uh, probably a consistent nice look down there benefits uh, some of the improvements we're doing on. Obviously, the lighting, the it would seem odd to not make our streets look as good as we can. Hey, somebody's well, and, and I'll just add here. that I know that <laughs> I know that uh, Public Works has been very uh, responsive to the needs and requests that have come from Salina downtown. They they, they won an award at their latest annual meeting. So yeah, I, mean, I do think that those things are very responsive. I don't know, I I don't know enough about the implications of crack seal and the and the microsurfacing and and what the positive aspects of that are enough to say yeah let's go do that or whatever but i do i will just say that um just to echo sort of your comments and and uh your concerns and that is is that i i do feel also that it's the heart of the community and and we need to do what we can to um react in ways that are consistent with that is that yes I think well so. <laughs> I'm not gonna, I, I don't know. If, I, don't know if, I don't notice it that much. I, I, yeah. I'm noticing other things when I'm driving. So, yeah. well, t typically yeah. what you'll find is a street that has a lot of cracks. There's a lot of that uh, crack ceiling material, and you can feel it. Quite honestly, I think the biggest benefit in downtown is the aesthetic because you have an even colored surface. You right. don't have a, a lighter colored street with all the dark, you know, lines all the way through it. If there's anything, it's more of a it's a clean aesthetic look. That's probably the one of the bigger benefits for the downtown, mm -hmm. I would say. So, other thoughts? I, I really don't don't mind. I as long as it doesn't take away from some one of the other outlying streets that, mm -hmm. that need it worse, you know. Yeah. I, I think, I think I have, we can balance that. I'd have to look at my yeah, sum, sure. but I think we can balance that pretty well. Mm -hmm. so. All right. Very good. Thank you. Any other business, other business? No, I was just starting to say, hey, Thank you. thanks for the uh, these coming out. This is great. They're finally putting these uh, violations. Did they mention how many that they have? How many warning tickets they've dropped off, or are they just sort of dropping these off and not riding down the mount? I, well, no, they're tracking them. I, I I don't know as of right now. I knew in one day we were at over 100. So on yeah. one particular day, if you last week. So I know there yeah. are quite a few out there. A lot of uh, instances yeah. of parking. This is of course related to parking in the yards, and some has been talked about for a long time. Mm -hmm. Do they have Commissioner Halsalter's uh, signature on them? They should. They should. There should be my face we, in the we corner did put of his it. Phone number, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's yeah. And the phone number is great too. I'd love <laughs> to talk. Nobody. I love talking more than more than people who are willing to park in their front yard, but. Can you, can you do some cartwheels for us now? Yeah, that's great. I'm, I know, I'm, that excited. I'm almost, you are I'm almost that. that excited. I am I almost excited <laughs> enough to do cartwheels. It's proof you can make a I'd difference. I'd for him it? to do yeah. cartwheels. Make it interesting a difference. to see yeah. how much good the warnings do. You never know. You never well, know. I hope so. Because, I don't like I mean, to pay fines. I, yeah. I know I wouldn't do it again. Yeah, our, our intent isn't just to go collect fines. That's why we're, we're having this sort of an amnesty opportunity and right. uh, kind of a time to educate folks and let them know that this is something we're going to focus on. So hopefully... When the time comes, we won't uh, have to give too many tickets right. out. And it's, and it's really more than a, a visual thing, too. It, it really is a health and safety issue. People parking in unimproved surfaces. I've witnessed it in my, in, uh, in, in where my, my, my studio is on State Street, you know, where people will park that fills with water. Water is mosquitoes, mosquitoes, disease, on and on and on. I mean, and, and it breaks down our sidewalks. I see people using the handicap ramps, driving up. 
they're destroying the handicap ramps, and then the people in, who need those facilities can't use them because they've been broken up because people chose to drive up them. So it, it's more than just an aesthetic thing, although that is a, a big issue too, but uh, it, it goes further than that. So. I think it's great. You know, it just, it just, since we're doing other business, just to kind of follow up on this, you might be able to answer this question. <laughs> and on Highland Street, we share driveways. So the house I, I bought, we share a driveway with the neighbor who is a renter. He parks in the driveway overnight. I can't get in my driveway. That's my driveway. Oh, so yeah, we share a driveway and we share a garage. And there are several houses like that in, on Highland, you know, the older houses. We talk so they're, they're a renter and I'm an owner. I told you that last weekend. We call that good, so, good neighbors. So, good so, neighbor policy, So yeah. would it be this? Because no. it's, it's a surface. But that's, I mean, he'll park his car I'm, I'm there two or three days and no. just leave it I'll there. put my real estate hat yeah, back that's, on. So, or do I call the police on him? Or do I park behind him and block him in? You know, it's... It's private property. What do you do? Yeah. <laughs> and I, like I said, I own the house. He rents the house. Yeah, I don't even know how I go about approaching that. I yeah, think, yeah. I, I think probably it's frustrating. I, would, I would look at the documents that, that dictate that joint uh, usership there, mm -hmm. and you're probably 50-50, and it's probably more about coordinating than it right, is anything else. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. I, just need to, I need to figure out who the actual owner of the house is and get a hold of them. Take Wait them some cookies to repay and see it. if that yeah. does anything. If uh, you could watch like Grumpy Old Men, they'd not, give you some ideas. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need to get with my husband on that one. He could, on he, that's that his note. favorite movie. He could probably go and do that. Or uh, what was it? Randy Quaid in the movie uh, Moving. Yeah. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> get him as a neighbor over there to... Pee in his yard or something. The second. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Meetings adjourned. There you go.